dare to look into a world where you are vulnerable. Smile while the clueless glass shows what it sees, never knowing the beauty that lies beneath. I grew up 45 minutes away from one of the dive capitals of the world, in Key Largo, Florida. And when I was four years old, my parents threw me into the sea on a coral reef in the famous John Penny Camp State Park. Now, while I don't remember specifics, I do remember just movement and color and just this riot of life, including what I remember being lots and lots of really scary barracudas. Now, my dad loves to tell this story about how the Barracuda and I scared each other so badly that it took him 20 minutes to coax me back into the water. But what I remember is how much I loved every second of it. And the experience sparked this lifelong love of the ocean that drove me to pursue a career in marine biology. I figured that as a scuba diver, I could do something I really loved in a place I really enjoyed, namely coral reefs. And Marine science would allow me to get into a really mentally stimulating field, like you can see here, where I'm very scientifically testing the patience of a clownfish. The results, of course, are that clownfish are highly territorial and notoriously impatient. But I also learned that coral reefs are incredible places. They are, of course, made up of corals, which are themselves totally underrated. Ask the average person if a coral is a plant, an animal, or a rock, and see what they say. Corals are, in fact, made up of hundreds, millions, billions of these tiny little animals called polyps. Although they do build a mineral skeleton, which is the rock part, and they do have this mutualistically symbiotic little microalgae that lives in their tissues and donates extra photosynthetic energy to the coral animal. That's the plant part. But these tiny little polyps come together and they form the foundation of this critically important ecosystem that is so massive, it can be seen from space. And we call this ecosystem very simply coral reefs. And coral reefs offer us humans a lot. Coral reefs can dissipate up to 97% of a wave's energy before it ever even reaches shore, providing us with invaluable coastal protection. Coral reefs support at least 25% of all marine species, or that's one in four that you can think of. Coral reefs directly support millions of people around the world through their livelihood and sustenance, as well as benefiting billions more. And they underpin entire economies based on tourism and fisheries. And these incredible, indispensable ecosystems are hidden out of sight to most people beneath the ocean waves. So, after a master's degree in coral biology, actually, I figured that I would go back to the reefs of my childhood and just pay a visit. And when I got there, things had taken a bit of an unexpected turn. The color, the movement, that riot of life that I remembered was gone. It was gray, listless, and even the few remaining fish seemed resigned to swimming across this endless, colorless expanse of rubble that are effectively the bones of the once living coral. I was now looking at a graveyard to which life was still desperately clinging. So in the time that I was having fun and studying towards what I hoped would be a future career, I hadn't realized that the very thing I wanted to study, the coral reefs, were dying. And they're dying fast. In fact, in the last 30 years, we've lost 50% of the world's coral reefs, making corals some of the most at-risk species on this planet. And what's worse is that if current predictions hold true, we fully expect that in the next 100 years, coral reefs as an ecosystem, not just the corals that make them up, will go extinct within the next 80 years. That's some of the lifetimes of the people in this room. So how did we go from this complex, healthy system to a graveyard? Well, hum coral reefs have a big problem, us. On a local level, we've exploited and exploded them. We've polluted them, and we've overfished them to the point of unbalancing the delicate dance of this ecosystem. 
And then, of course, there's all the carbon dioxide that we've pumped into the atmosphere, causing the world's Earth and ocean temperatures to increase faster than at any other time in its history. Now, we know corals are incredibly resilient. They have evolved and adapted and survived for 500 million years. But if they're going to survive the immediate future, let alone another 500 million years, then we need to address both our climate impacts and work towards a carbon negative future, as well as address our local impacts. So I know that this sounds really hopeless, because that's how I was feeling 10 years ago. So I went and tried to find something to do about it. And I found that around the world, there are scientists and researchers and organizations who are working to combat coral reef degradation through the process of coral reef restoration. And I'm really proud to be one of them. I work for an organization called the Coral Restoration Foundation, or CRF, where we manage one of the largest restoration efforts in the world. For us, here's a pretty typical day. We have divers who propagate genetically diverse corals in huge offshore coral nurseries that are home to over 20 species of corals and 1,300 individual genetic variants. We then take these corals and return them in massive quantities to the reefs of the Florida Keys, spanning over 100 miles from Key Largo to Key West, so as to help restore wild populations of these important little animals. And it all starts with a coral tree, like this one. This is a simple technology that CRF innovated, and that's now being used around the world. What you see here are small, finger-sized pieces of a critically endangered Caribbean species called staghorn coral. Now, do me a favor and pick your favorite little coral. Have you found it yet? Now, nine months later, how is your coral looking? Again, this is a simple technology, but it allows us to scale up the work we're doing so that we can work more efficiently. But you know what? It's not just one tree, and it's not a few dozen trees. It's an American football field worth of trees. What every dot you see here is a tree, and that is 500 trees or 30,000 corals in just over an acre-sized space. This is the largest coral nursery in the world. But for us, it's just one of them. We have multiple, and together, they can currently grow over 45,000 corals to be reef-ready every single year. So great, we can grow all of these corals. Now we have to get them back out onto the reef. Once they're big enough, we harvest them from one of these coral nurseries. And then we take them to the surface in very high-tech milk crates, where the corals will then travel to their new reef homes. Our divers go up and down the Florida Keys, and they attach these corals directly to the reef substrate using a non-toxic marine epoxy. We outplant these corals in similar genetic and cohorts of similar genetic variants that grow, and as they do, they will skeletally fuse into each other. And in this way, we can cover entire swaths of coral reefs, creating habitat and food for everything that live on it. But it's not just one or 10 corals we do this per year, it's hundreds of corals per year that add up to a lot. In 2021, we, did, we, had ret we returned over 35,000 corals to the reefs of the Florida Keys. So, is it working? Well, we used to track all of these corals using pencil and paper, by hand, in person, individually. But when you have over 100,000 corals, it gets pretty hard to pay a house visit to each and every single one. Plus, it can be surprisingly hard to count underwater. So now we use them using, now we uh, harness the power of technology. We use a computer program that stitches together thousands of high resolution images that allows us to visualize the reef through photo mosaics. We can do this before outplanting, after outplanting, or years after outplanting. And in this way, we can see not only how the corals are doing, but how much area they're actually covering. And sometimes we get photobombed by more than just the corals. We've also collaborated with our scientists and organizations and researchers to assess whether restoration can be successful. And this research tells us that we are stabilizing the reef, but it demonstrates how important it is that restoration organizations keep putting corals out there so that we can stabilize wild populations and keep them viable while we work to combat the threats to these precious ecosystems. 
But what makes us giddy every single year is the fact that our corals spawn. In the case of this staghorn coral, you're seeing little bundles of eggs and sperm being released into the water column. This months-long, energy-intensive process is important for evolutionary reasons, but it makes us happy for a much simpler one. The very fact that our corals have the energy to reproduce after growing, catching food, fighting for space, and everything else tells us that they're not struggling to survive, they're thriving. And it's not just the corals on the reef that do this, it's, sorry, it's not just the corals in the nursery that do this, it's those we've returned to the reef as well. As of the end of 2020, Coral Restoration Foundation has returned over 170,000 corals to the reefs of the Florida Keys. And that sounds like a lot to you, but to us, we're just getting started. We're not stopping anytime soon because we have a race to win. This is not the career I expected. I hadn't really anticipated to spend my life trying to save an entire ecosystem, really just to study it. But in a way, I've gone from a career to a calling. So while I stand here in front of you today to tell you that we have a really big problem that needs our immediate attention, I also get to tell you that there are scientists and researchers and organizations around the world who are working really hard to save these precious ecosystems and how it impacts our future. We know that large-scale massive action can help save the world's coral reefs. We just need more people to help in any way they can. So the next time you look at the ocean, don't be overwhelmed by the problems it's facing, but remember that there is a world of solutions that you can be part of. Thank you.